Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bill of World Bible School and welcome to my School of Ministry where we've been teaching for over two years on things pertaining to ministers, things pertaining to those who are a part of ministry, uh, like things about the ministry, like uh, certain types of teachings, group teachings. And so we've been talking about 50 things the Holy Spirit does for us and in us. And of course, this could be labeled or titled 50 things the Holy Spirit did for us and in us. But we also know that that is a continuing work that we're seeing happen uh, in our lives. So uh, as we're talking about this, we've been taking five of those per week for 10 weeks. And we're in part number nine. So we're looking at number 41 through uh, 45 today. And then next week, uh, it, it, as far as I know, next week, or at least next time I'm on the air, uh, we'll be doing the final five and then we'll be going to a new series. So we've been looking at the person of the Holy Spirit, what he is, what he does, and how, what is his character? How does he act? And and all of those things. Now, as I'm doing these today, some of these uh, will uh, points will take longer explanations than others. Some of them will be shorter, of course. And so let's get started with our first one today, which is technically number 41 in our list of 50 things the Holy Spirit does for us and in us. And if you've been following this broadcast, uh, uh, not just in, over the last couple of years, but at least uh, through this series, um, that's great. If not, uh, you'll find all of these in a playlist under um, World Bible School International Training Center. I'm sure if you pull up World Bible School, you'll uh, you'll find us. So um, anyway, uh, so let's get started with number 41. The Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth in our own soul or conscious mind. Now, <coughs> to explain that, let me tell you what the, the word soul means or uh, the soul, what the soul is. And where we get this from, the word soul is uh, your mind, will, intellect, and emotions. Now, if you were to look up the word um, heart, you would see, generally speaking, uh, that it is the Greek word cardia. And cardia is where we get our English word cardiac or cardiology from. And it really refers to the rational soul, the human rational soul. But also understand that it is the meaning for it basically the mind, will, intellect, and emotions. And um, it comes from a Latin word, C-O-R, which means the center of your being or the core of your being. So it's important to know that. All right. So the Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth in our own soul. In other words, he bears witness uh, of the truth in our own soul or in our conscious mind. Uh, Romans 9 verse 1 says, I tell the truth in Christ. Paul says, I am not lying. My conscience also bearing witness, bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. So what Paul is uh, looking at here, the Apostle Paul went as far as to let people know that uh, his own conscious mind had received from the Holy Spirit, a witness from the Spirit about the truth that he was speaking to the people. You ever, uh, some of you today who are ministers probably can relate to the fact that there have probably been times when you were saying something or ministering something, and all of a sudden you kind of had this feeling uh, or this witness inside that maybe what you were saying really wasn't as accurate as you'd like it to have been. And uh, how did that happen? Uh, because of a witness from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so knowing that, 
Uh, the reality is, is that the Holy Spirit will bear witness to you in your, we say in your own spirit, but actually in your own soul. Uh, you see, your spirit man was created in the image and likeness of God uh, before the foundation of the world. Now, your physical man in Adam, in all, all mankind in Adam, but your, you as a spirit being were created uh, in God before the foundation of the world. Now, having said that, the witness has to do with, as Paul is teaching here, uh, your conscious soul or your conscious mind. And as you look at that, the reality is, is that in your conscious mind or in your soul, you are able to get a witness or hear um since know the witness of the holy spirit in you and um and in relationship to that he will let you know where you're going what you're doing what direction to take um what you're saying and so on and so paul gets that witness and in his own conscious mind he receives a witness from the Holy Spirit about the truth he's speaking. He had just finished saying in the previous chapter that for I am this for for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor, nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now that's just raw uh, English Bible, no translation of the words and meanings and who who's 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 talking to who here it's just a very uh, rough uh, version of what what we what Paul said now having said that what we want to see is that Paul seems to be broken hearted that his people Israel were rejecting Jesus as the Messiah uh, you know, that happens in Christian literature. We see things that the Apostle Paul experiences and what he experiences is really, you know, his, his heart's torn because Israel is not rejecting Jesus as the Messiah. There had always been promised and prophesied that a Messiah would come and uh, certain things a Messiah would be able to do. Jesus came and fulfilled all those things, yet the Jews did not accept Jesus, this Jewish boy uh, uh, from Nazareth, as being the Messiah. The reality is, is that Paul had received a revelation of the Christ, the Christ, amen, Jesus Christ, uh, who loved him and gave himself for him. And everyone in the world needs a revelation of God's love for all mankind. The greatest revelation mankind could get is not the picture of religiosity's version of religion's version of salvation. What mankind could, needs to get is a, a re revelation of the fact that God loves them. All right, let's move on to number 42, which is number two in our uh, list for today, but it's number 42 in our list of 50. The Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us. Now, I want to say something very important here. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's read the scripture because I know I'm not going to forget to say this, but uh, let's read the scripture in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 13. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Let me read the same verse to you from the Message Bible. It says, we don't have to rely on the world's guesses and opinions. We don't. We didn't learn this by reading books or going to school. We learned it from God who taught us person to person through Jesus well, what is that? The Holy Spirit taught us. God taught us person to person through Jesus as we're passing it on to you in the same firsthand personal way. All right. Now watch this. Uh, here we have some words that tell us that, you know, we didn't get this stuff by reading books. We got it from God. We learned it from God. Now, now Paul is teaching here and saying we learned this from God who taught us. God not himself, not Holy Spirit himself, not God himself, but taught us person to person through someone else, through Jesus. And we're passing it on to you in the same firsthand personal way. Now, we're sharing it. We got it from Jesus, and who got it from God, and we're hearing this whole thing. Well, here's a principle in this point, and that is that we need to understand the value of being taught things by the Holy Spirit. Now, 
as one who studies the word, I, I, I really do spend, this is not a braggadocious thing, this is just information. I really do spend a lot of time each week in the word. I don't have a lot of time to answer tons of Facebook messages. I try, we, we pray for people, we'll answer prayer needs. But the reality is, is that, is this, that being taught by the Holy Spirit is so very important. But if you think sitting around in a room, whether dark or fully lighted, and you're just going to sit there kind of in a trance and the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you, can that happen? The answer is yes. But here's the attitude many people take is they say, I don't need to be taught by any preacher. I don't need to be taught by any teacher. I don't need Bible college. I just need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And people like that are so super religious that they're almost anti-Christian. And I say that with all due respect to my fellow man. But the reality is this, that there is such value. See, we also need to see the value in the Holy Spirit teaching us through other people. That's the principle that Paul was talking about here, being taught by the Holy Spirit. But that might be that someone years ago heard the Holy Spirit and they taught it. And then we heard it and now we're teaching it to others. So in other words, as this thing goes along, are we being taught by the Holy Spirit? The answer is yes. Is it the Holy Spirit directly? Well, in some ways, the answer is yes. The reality is, is that we need to understand Holy Spirit is doing the teaching, but he's using the voice of other people. John 14, verse 26 says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now, I didn't hear Jesus say those things to me. I read them in an English Bible. They're not exactly accurately translated. So I have to study and listen. But this says the Holy Spirit will teach you. But uh, he's going to, to uh, teach you all things. And he's going to be remembering to you. Remember, so he's going to tell me what Jesus said. But I might hear this for 10 teachers that say the same thing. This is so valuable to know in this verse. Also remember that many ways that the Holy Spirit can use uh, to teach you could be through uh, at the television. I'm not a huge television preacher fan. Uh, it, 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 television, through radio, through the internet, through books. I mean, there's many ways the Holy Spirit can speak through someone to teach you. You say, can you really break that down and prove that in a very practical way? Well, the answer is yes, I can. The Bible says that all scriptures of the divine inspiration is, is from the divine inspiration of God, and it was inspired by who? A holy men of old were inspired. That could be holy women of old as well. They were inspired by the word of God. Did you know that we had other books of the Bible that before we had English translations and all these uh, philosophy majors who decided what belonged in the Bible, what didn't belong in the Bible? You know, prior to the 1600s, I understand that we had other books of the Bible, the lost books, the Maccabees and so on. And I don't know all of those. I know of those. But the reality is, is that we just. Uh, uh, need to understand that there was an original translation that spoke the original, the pure, unadulterated word of God that holy men of old heard, and they preached it to us. Now, all these years later, no matter how diluted from translation to translation, we've now heard them from other people. So that is proof positive that we can hear the word of God through other people. All right, let's move on to our third one, which was is number 43 in our list of things the Holy Spirit does and teaches us and shows us and so on. And uh, so here's here's an important one. And I think this is going to be a good one for you today. Uh, and that is that the Holy Spirit gives us joy. Now, there are a lot of scriptures I could have used for this. But first Thessalonians 1 verse 6 says, and you became, not become, but you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, be careful with that word, with joy of the Holy Spirit. The, this, this, is, uh, this is the New King James, uh, but not a really good translation to use, uh, because I want to caution you today that when you use the word affliction, be careful how you use it, and also 
be careful to study and interpret it properly. Oh, my goodness. Uh, First Thessalonians 1, 6 in the Amplified Bible, which is really a more accurate translation, says you became imitators of us and through us of the Lord. Notice the, the, the progression there. After you welcomed our message in a time of great trouble with the joy supplied by the Holy Spirit. So let me ask you a question. Who do you think experiences trouble in life? You know, the Bible said in the world you'll have tribulation, okay? and uh, But don't stop there because that word is so inaccurately translated. The word tribulation is translated pressure. In this world, you'll have pressure. But in me, you'll have what? Peace. Okay. Now, here's here's a principle here to follow. Among the things that go on in our world from day to day, there are pressures. There are certain pressures we deal with. Isn't that right? Okay. Having considered that, we need to understand that among those pressures, we also have the ability to rest in Jesus, to operate in his peace and not allow pressures to rule us or control us. So in times of great trouble, guess what? Joy supplied by the Holy Spirit, not joy that's going to be supplied, but joy that has been supplied by the Holy Spirit. There is joy in you. It's a fruit of the Spirit. You may not operate it in all the time. Don't don't get under condemnation for it. But even if you don't, here's the thing. Joy is in you. It can be accessed any time. It's been placed in you by Holy Spirit. So in times of great trouble, they were still able to lead others to follow Christ. They welcomed the message of Jesus even in persecution. Okay? Why? And, and um, honestly, honestly, what they're really talking about here is, is exactly that. N- not so much affliction, not so much uh, a time of great trouble, but really in times of great persecution, they were still able to follow Jesus and lead others to follow Jesus. Why? Because the joy that was supplied or given to them by the Holy Spirit, just as with us today. Amen. Okay, now let's look at uh, number 44, which is four on our list. Number 44, the Holy Spirit enables us to preach the gospel. Let me clarify something first, first of all, uh, because I know the first thing somebody might say today is, well, I'm not a preacher of the gospel. Actually, you are a preacher of the gospel. Uh, Have you ever said, thank you, Jesus? Have you ever prayed over your meal in a public place? Have you ever given a Bible track or or given a Bible to someone or or testified about Jesus uh, in a public place? Have you ever uh, shared Jesus with anyone uh, that didn't know Christ? Uh, Here's the thing. Uh, If you have or have not, at some point in time, you probably witnessed about Jesus. What exactly does that mean? Well, you preach the gospel. To preach means to to share. Uh, To preach means to uh, convey a message. Um, It doesn't mean if you're a person that has a big ministry and has a pulpit ministry, you preach to hundreds and thousands of people every week. That's not what that means at all. Uh, but But it's still the principle is the Holy Spirit enables us to share the gospel or to preach the gospel. 1 Peter 1 verse 12 in the Amplified Classic Edition says, It was then disclosed to them that the services they were rendering were not meant for themselves and their period of time, but for you. So this is speaking now to a people and saying, you know what, the things that were done there, they're not for you. They're for another time, for another people. It is very, it is, it is these very things which have now already been made known plainly to you by those who preached the good news, the gospel, to you by the same Holy Spirit sent from heaven into these things, the very angels long to look. Now, this is a very good point today uh, because as we look at this, we need to understand that uh, this verse, first of all, is almost self-explanatory, but but I'm going to add some things to it. I'm going to help with this. It was revealed to the people of that day uh, 
that they were not serving themselves, but those who taught them. It's not wrong to serve one another. It's a biblical principle. Those who preach the word to them, it seems that they recognize that the message was spoken by men, but really came through the Holy Spirit. So this principle continues on from point to point. They realized that the Holy Spirit came from heaven, or at least came out of the heavenly realm. And they were saying that they needed to realize how fortunate they were in that even heavenly angels, or we could say and interpret it properly, heavenly messengers would have uh, given anything to be in on this revelation. This revelation is not for angels. It's not to, uh, in that sense. Uh, but the reality is, is Paul was spe or Peter was speaking a very, very powerful word here. And I think it's important that maybe you take first Peter one verse 12 and read it from a variety of translations and just, just, you know, like the Eastern standard version, like the uh, um, Americans had the new American standard and so on and so forth. The, the, the God's word translation, the, the living uh, uh, translation and so on. And uh, just get some other perspectives on this verse because it's a very powerful verse. Okay. Let's move on now to our our uh, number 45 on our list of 50. It's our last one for today, but I have several scriptures actually to share with you to uh, bring this about. This one, uh, th this point says the Holy Spirit moves us. Now, I kind of left that open for um, uh, a thought with, with you because the reality is, uh, you know, when we look at this verse, um, uh, you know, <laughs> Does the Holy Spirit move us? Well, the answer is yes. But what I want to talk to you about is how the Holy Spirit moves us, because I want you to understand that's what what's going on in you, you know, comes from the Holy Spirit. OK, so let's read from Second Peter, chapter one, verse 21. For prophecy never came by the will of men, but by holy men of old, or it should read uh, or at least could read. But men spoke from God. They spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The modern English translation of this, uh, modern English version of this same verse says this, and we have a more reliable word of prophecy, which you would do well to follow, as to a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. But this know, first of all, that no prophecy of the scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy, and I'm reading you uh, verse 19 through 21. I should have clarified that. Uh, for none of you. Um, for no prophecy at any time. Was produced by the will of men. But holy men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Okay, so that's very important. And it's very interesting, actually, to put all three of those verses together, uh, as I probably should have done in the beginning. Very important. Okay, so when we talk about being moved by the Holy Spirit, what are we really saying? Well, I think what we're saying is this. I think that. When a person gives a prophecy, do you not feel a moving or a wooing of the Holy Spirit inside of you? I mean, do you not sense? Let me ask you a question. And I think I addressed this in another teaching recently. But where do you feel God move you? Now, I, I said, said actually in this morning's uh, broadcast uh, addressing a particular scripture, uh, when God moves you, are you actually feeling uh, some force on the outside drawing you or moving you, or are you feeling something on the inside? Well, this is what I told the folks, that 99.9% .9 of what you're sensing or thinking or, or, uh, or feeling is actually coming from on the inside of you, not the outside of you. Uh, the reality is, is that we're moved by God uh, on the inside. Now, 
when a person prophesies, it's not, uh, it does not mean that man's wrong mindset cannot get involved in the prophesying. So I want to share that with you. Let's talk about this because a lot of people don't like prophecy uh, because people, they think people get in the flesh or they, you know, say what they think and not really what God is saying. But we're going to have to understand that the way God speaks, and I'll show you another scripture in a moment, but the way God speaks is he funnels his voice through us. Now, from the inside, but I'm just giving you an example. He funnels his voice through us, and we speak as the mouthpiece of God. So the reality is, is when a person prophesies, it does not mean that man's wrong mindsets or man's wrong thinking or man's humanness cannot get involved in the prophesy, prophecy, which makes it wrong. See, this is why we all must be cautious to mix, not to mix our own words or our own troubles, our own pressures into a prophetic word. But at the same time, we need to understand that the motivation to prophesy comes from the Holy Spirit and not from a fleshly motivation. This verse is saying no prophecy at any time was produced by the will of men, but holy men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. So here's the thing. Don't be afraid to prophesy. Don't be afraid to give a word from God. Don't be afraid to walk up to a stranger and say, you know, Holy Spirit is telling me that you're really struggling today. And uh, you're, the doctor just told you recently, gave you a bad report of your health. And I know you're having a hard time. I don't know that by my own mind, but I know that by the Holy Spirit who is speaking to me. God said, be, don't be afraid to say God's speaking to me. You know, the reality is, is that, uh, there, that this verse is not talking about prophesying, but the prophecy of the written word. Now, my wife asked me a question one time and she said, why are not more Bibles being written? I mean, the reality is, is God speaks to people. We write books, do we not? Yeah, we write books. We teach sermons. We're teaching on the Internet. We're saying, here's what God's showing me. Here's what God's saying. Well, the reality is that's what happened back in Bible days is God spoke to uh, holy men of old and they were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God and heard what God said, and they and they said it. Notice the scripture in 2 Timothy 3. We'll look at verse 16 and 17. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, your inner man, your soul, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, be clear on this. Not perfect men were moved by the Holy Spirit to write the Bible. I want to say that again because so many people are confused about what God did. God spoke to people, men and women, and there were scriptures that were written. There were books that were written, some that are not included in your Bible that were taken out for, for because man decided they didn't belong there. It doesn't mean they did. It just means that some group of men uh, decided it didn't belong there. But here's what I want to say to you. We need to understand that God did not speak to perfect men. God spoke to imperfect men. God spoke to imperfect women. They were moved by the Holy Spirit, and they wrote down what they were moved about. Did they mix any of their own thoughts in it? You know, I, I'm rarely, rarely, relatively confident that God uh, dealt with that and got the, 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 the humanness out, but it doesn't mean that they didn't. When people write books today, write religious books, do they mix any of them? So they mix a whole lot of themselves in there. But what we're trying to do is convey a message that God has spoken something. And let me share with you what I think God is saying. Okay, so uh, it's not that perfect men were moved by the Holy Spirit, but it's that a perfect Holy Spirit inspired imperfect men to write. Did you get that? The, 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 the Not perfect men, but a perfect Holy Spirit inspired imperfect men to write. And although you and I may not be perfect, a perfect God loves you, a perfect son died for you, and a perfect Holy Spirit will use you to do the work of God. Isn't that right? Okay, now, the Holy Spirit will use you, 
he'll use an imperfect you to prophesy to the nations of this world and bring about change. So what I wanted to, to leave with you today is this, that it's highly possible that you're not doing the work of God today because you look at yourself and say, you know, I'm an imperfect person. As a matter of fact, you know how some ministers and church uh, 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 congregations, church boards would look at you today and say, well, you're so imperfect. We cannot allow you to do anything in the worship services. You're going to have to sit down. You know, the reality is that's extremely wrong. That's wrong on so many levels. Why is that, Dr. Bill? Because, again, it's an imperfect you who heard the perfect word of God. And a perfect Holy Spirit uses an imperfect you to do the work of God. The reality is, is don't judge yourself too harshly and don't allow the condemnation of other people to come on you. I know you're not perfect. You know I'm not perfect. In our humanness, we, we are not perfect. In our unrenewed soul, we are not perfect. But we are getting there. We're working on it. We're, God is working in us by Holy Spirit and with the word of God. So the reality is, is serve God, work for God. Uh, even though you might view yourself as an imperfect you, just understand that a whole, a perfect Holy Spirit is working in you to minister to imperfect people who have needs in their lives. Does that make sense? So I want to thank you today for joining me. Uh, I, I just hope you're encouraged by these things. Uh, they're such precious scriptures. And while all of them were not written to us, and uh, they certainly were written for us, for our benefit, for our learning. And so I want to thank you for joining me today and for watching this lesson. And I hope you gained something, uh, 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 some understanding somewhere about the, what the Holy Spirit does for you and in you. Next time, join me for another exciting episode of our School of Ministry. And we are educating future generations with a better understanding of the Word of God. That's my mission. That's my goal. That's my heart. And uh, as we do that, let me just pray for you right now, uh, because I know that many of you are watching. I don't know all of your, your needs, all of your situations, but Holy Spirit does. And let me just pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all of my brothers and sisters around the world. Lord, whether their need today is a, a, a broader territory for ministry, whether their need is the finances for ministry, whether their need is a better paying job to support their household and take care of their family, whether their need is a better house or a better automobile, uh, whatever the, uh, for debt cancellation, supernatural weight loss, Holy Spirit can give us the desires to eat right, to, uh, uh, to believe right. Amen. Uh, whether you have a health problem, I just release healing and finances and wholeness. Father God, I know that when people all over the world ask me for money, I can't supply everybody's need. I can't even help everybody's need. But what I do know is that you are the supplier and that you are the one that can cause supernatural manifestations of finances, of health, of prosperity, of all of these things, of automobiles uh, to manifest uh, to people. So, Father, I just thank you right now. Thank you for your peace, for your rest. Thank you, Lord, that you work mightily in our lives. We bless you today and honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for watching today. God bless you. I'll see you next time on uh, our School of Ministry. Uh, join us Monday morning for um, uh, with Live Talk with Faye and uh, her guest. Uh, join us uh, uh, Monday afternoon at 2 p.m. for uh, WBS uh, University uh, uh, Campus Chat. Uh, they're, they're all a lot of fun. And um, so God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everyone.